Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Jeff and today we're going to have some fun playing Magic and we are playing some Zagros, Zagros aggro today. So Zagros, Thief of Heartbeats, 6 mana, 4-4 four, four with flying, death touch, haste. This spell costs 1 less to cast for each creature in your party. So if we have a rogue, a warrior, a cleric, a tri- uh, a, a, uh, sorry, wizard, there it is, I can't spoke right today. Uh, then if we have all those on the, on the battlefield, then Zagros just costs 2 mana as a uh, four four flying death touch with haste and it also says other creatures you control have death touch and whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a planeswalker destroy that planeswalker so just a really really powerful top end card here that can you know it can fill top end at you know six mana or it could just be three mana for us four mana for us and that's basically what we're trying to do is make it a four mana spell potentially a three mana spell and just be really busted busted card for us it gives all of our other stuff death touch so with our deck we're trying to play the best most aggro things that we can play while still sticking with the party theme the biggest issue with this is we don't get as many good like aggro cards in red because of it so we don't get to i don't want that we don't get to uh bring in you know like the hellhound or fervent champion or whatever there's not a ton of good uh creatures that are in the one drop slot like this is the only one is the fireblade charger that's in a warrior as long as it's equipped it has haste which is great and all and it just kind of pings if it gets if it dies meh it wasn't something i really wanted to bring in so that is the only side of this is that we have a ton of kind of black one drops and then on our two drop slot we have all the good other stuff we have our cargan intimidator which is the amazing warrior so yeah vessel is the cleric and guild enforcer is the rogue um we have the intimidator as a warrior robber the rich as another rogue we kind of have like a rogue theme in this deck as well with thieves guild enforcer um and honestly we probably need to bring in a wrinkle into the deck as well i just barely realized we need wrinkle We'll drop uh, actually the heightened reflexes there. That's that's good. Yeah, and one call a death roller. There we go. That's the deck we want. All right, so <laughs> we have Intimidator, Rubber the Rich, uh, Shadow Skull Smashing, which is one of our lands basically, uh, as well as Hogger Mauling and Agadim, which dude, I love having these pieces over here as the lands. It's so good. Uh, and so then basically the rest of the deck here, Call of Death Willard to be able to bring back our Archings Vessel, which is kind of just a nice little piece. We have so many three drops, two drops, one drops that help make other things cheaper that it's worth having these as well. Uh, we have uh, Nighthawk Scavenger and Shadow Skull's uh, Charger as well in the deck for our Warriors and another Rogue. Annex is kind of an awkward piece in here, but we're trying to go aggro with a deck. And this is what I've been trying to figure out is like whether or not I should be playing an Annex or not. I've tested out the game a couple, the deck a couple times and it actually does really well with things like Embercleave in the deck because we are going aggro because we're just trying to get creatures in and beat down. Like that is what our deck does well. Uh, Annex just kind of helps that out where we can have different things die or whatever. Uh, but I'm not totally sure it really deserves a slot because there's a lot of black creatures in here as well. So right now I'm going to go down to two copies, go up the Shatter Skull Smasher. Maybe go up to four copies of that actually. Because I actually, I tested out and Shatter Skull Smasher Charger is pretty sweet. It does get in for lots of damage, especially when it suddenly has Death Touch and Trample and Haste. It's it's pretty good stuff. So anyway, then we have Wrinkle to be another rogue for us. Uh, so we have Warriors, Rogues. Uh, we only have the one Cleric, but basically we want to get this down to a two drop for Zagras. So having Warriors, having Rogues on the battlefield will help us get there. With Wrinkle going in on turn four, if this one doesn't get there or whatever, that just kind of works out. Then Ember Cleave on the top end. In our land, and uh, we, there isn't a pathway for uh, for the uh, enemy lands, so mountain and swamp don't really work well together. Instead, we have to uh, play just a bunch of kind of tap lands. So four Fable Passages, two Castle Embreath for a little bit more aggro, one Castle Lockwain, and then we have our pain lands or our bolt lands i guess they're called now whatever the shadow skull smashing uh sorcery it's it's our removal spells and this is where i love this deck is we get to play aggro filling out our entire deck with creatures and aggro and making sure we're going to hit in our removal spells all come within our land base which is sweet because once we get up to five mana or so we don't really need more mana in this deck at, ever at any point uh and so then any of these extra ones that we run into of hogger mauling or shadow skull smashing just straight up become removal spells for us which is sweet they are a little bit de mana demanding two black two two red with not as many uh dual lands or any dual lands in our deck it makes it a little bit harder agadim's awakening as we do have a bunch of uh cheap uh spells to bring back two of i think uh, when this is with this is good we get to bring back uh if we have a lot of mana we can bring back um one of each cover of mana costs equal to whatever x is um 
and that'll be pretty sweet. And so anyway, that, there's just some really fun, cool things that you can do with this deck. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the gameplay, see how it does for us and wish me luck. Oh, we mulligan that. And this is the issue of not having the best land drops. We keep this, um, I guess we drop the one black source since it's not playable yet anyway. Okay. Uh, Tarikos, thanks so much for the prime sub. I appreciate it. All right, uh, these can come in tapped as well, so we don't have to pay the three life. Get out, Shatter School, the Hammer Pash. Sounds super cool, by the way. Uh, I, I am live now. I am recording for a YouTube video, though. Yeah, so we're playing this live because this is the pre-release event, and we kind of have fun. I mean, come on. Sweet, taking off some of their control. That is very nice. Robert the Rich, this is when we want to be playing that up against the control deck. I do think that Azorius Control is going to be one of the best decks in the format now. I'm not sure what it looks like, but I think that the Felidar uh, Landfall dude is going to be a piece of it. The The enchantment is so good. Uh, Uro Ban, I actually don't think... So the thing with Uro is it doesn't work with these lands. These do not count as land in your hand. So when Uro says put a land from hand into the battlefield, it doesn't work with these. You can play out the tap land or whatever this one first and then play something else and that can work out but it's a little bit different. Um, all right, let's just get in for another hit with Robber the Rich. I could go for this for the Charger, but meh. Let's get out the Black Source, play Robber the Rich, attack in. We have Ember Cleave hitting in for the next turn as well. Another Glass Casket and a Board Wipe. Sweet. Thank you. So yeah, this is this is Azorius Control. Skyclave Cleric, I think, is sweet land in this deck as well. Uh, being able to bring in for gain two life and have a good blocker against aggro seems pretty decent. Down to 18. Yeah, I feel like we still haven't done that much. We are stealing a lot of cards from their stuff, though. And we have a bunch of other rogues in the deck, so we should be fine. Um, so attack in first. Actually, wait, let's see here. Um, pay three. Depending on what we hit here, I may not go for the Ember Cleave. Get some triggers. What's up, Darkest Thought? Dude, I'm doing great. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll go Ember Cleave. Hopefully, no counter spell. I'm kind of fine drawing it out here as well, though. Mystical Dispute. That's fine. Okay, down to 16. Pass the turn. If we hit land, we have a big Shatter Skull Charger, which is sweet. The biggest downside of Shatter Skull Charger, though, is it doesn't work quite as well with Call of the Death Dweller. It does come in with haste so we can finish out a game. So I mean, that side of it's nice. But there are a lot of other downsides to it as well. By the way, welcome, everyone. How are you guys all doing? Uh, are you guys excited for Zendikar Rising? Dude, so pumped. OK, shout out this guy. That's cool. Um, two creatures with converted mana costs extra less, right? So yeah, we just bring those two back. That's fine. Oh wait, wait. Oh, with a total of converted mana costs. All right, that's right, that's right. All right, Arcane's vessel, charger. I don't play with Call of the Death Willow that often. I always forget how it actually works. I just know I get two things sometimes. <laughs> All right, down to twelve. Yeah, I'm not sure how great this is. It's kind of nice against the more aggro matchups. Um, let's play... Let's shot bolt this in. Um, now we can charge her with, with the kicker. Get in for five. Or we can play the Intimidator as well. Like, I may want it off the board in case there is another board wipe. So I... I think I'm fine doing it this way instead. Okay, goes for the neutralize. Play Intimidator, swing in. Okay, Zagras. We want the Zagras. That would be sweet. If they have the board wipe, Call the Death Weather is so nice here. All right, board wipe. It happens. That's cool. Uh, do we have any other rogues in here? All right, so Thieves Guild Enforcer. Mill them a bit. I'm thinking I want to bring back the uh, Robber the Rich. Yeah, so Robber the Rich, Arcane's Vessel, counter and counter, and mill them a little bit more, and create a 5-5. Five, five. 
They've already spent two shot of this guy, so I mean, hopefully they don't have another one. Get in for two. So many cards. <laughs> we got rid of quite a bit of the deck between Robber the Rich and Milling Over now. It's pretty sweet, pretty sweet. All right, Raisin Borrows and then Shatters just to not let us have a card. Oh, that's rough. Oh, that's so rough. Why is it showing that there's something to do here? All right, pass the turn. Fortunately, we can't use a Castle Lockwing just yet. Rude. Well, we bolt this in. If it gets, if this is countered, it's really frustrating. And we've gotten rid of, so, like, we had a bunch of counters in exile as well. So there's one, two. Omen of the Sea digs for another one. Two on top. Oh, no. Oh, no. Are they going to find the fourth? Okay, there we go. Nice. Dude, they have found so many counters in this deck. It's ridiculous. Oops. Oh, deck. No, not like this. We're actually, even with all of the modal lands, we're only running 24 lands in the deck because we're trying to stay a little more aggro. Um, and so we should be hitting lands, but I guess the hard part is they didn't have creatures out when we get the Shatter School summits. Or the Shatter School, the Hammer Pass. Charger. All right, well, let's go ahead and kick you in. Okay, attack in. We are winning the race a little bit. Brazen Bar is still going to be an issue, though. They get a hit in for four. We get a hit for five. Actually, do we lose the race? We, I mean, we still go aggressive. That's our only play. This does have trample. So they, they have an interesting choice. They get to kill us in two hits. Um, I mean, I should play out the land just in case we need to lock the wane. We'll see. I should have played out the land there, I think. What do you think about the new set? I do. This set is so fun. I am having a blast. Okay, gets in for four. We have so many cards that are useful here. Uh, Vanilla Fish, thanks so much for uh, two months of Prime. I appreciate it. Man, if we find an untapped black source, this is so good to play here. So the next turn, if we find it, if I can just hold back for one turn, actually, uh, we're not quite dead, right? Or I can have a chance with Castle Offgoing, which we go down to one, I think, this turn. So play the mountain, no attacks, pass the turn. No more mutate. Uh, the only reason I would play mutate is on the scoot, uh, the scoot guy, because it's really cool. Oh, wow, that's bad. Good game. Oh, we just hit so many lands at the end there. That was rough. Rough, rough, rough. Barking over here. Up against Vladislav. And yeah, keep this. We have two things. We have three lands, which is nice. I I always keep two land hands, but whenever I'm able to actually do... Uh, wasn't Hello over on the left side before? Ooh, and we got the Zagras. Sweet. I always have two land hands. That's like my curse. But being able to have these lands in here as well. All of a sudden, I don't have two land hands. And life is great. <laughs> oh, we really want to play that. How many cards do they have? Enough that we can still hit with Robber, right? So, swing in. See what we can hit. Ooh, I'll take that. That's another cleric for us as well. Have this enter tapped. Now we have Embercleave turned on if we don't get the Zagras. If we do get Zagras, then that's also just amazing. What is this again? All right, so as long as it has five more counters on it, it gains life. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, uh, put a plus one plus one counter onto it. All right. A second Robber of the Rich could be really good. But we go for the Embercleave play. Ooh, and Broodmoth. <laughs> And opponent scoops it up. Sweet. 
<laughs> we didn't actually get to play any new cards, unfortunately. I guess the Shatter Skull. We'll have to count there. All right, only two lands here. We are on the draw. Um, I may hold off on the Vessel just to try to get Robert the Rich out on turn two. It's just, it's really good. We'll keep this. Hello, how are you? Tomonian. Gots the triumphs. Ooh, all right, that is that is a red source, actually. That's not terrible. All right, go Robber the Rich. Uh, I don't think we get any value, yeah. Being on the draw makes Robber the Rich a lot worse. What's up, Slammed Enough? How you doing? Welcome, welcome. Uh. All right, let's uh, bolt. Um, vessel robber. No attacks. Pass the turn. We get Ember Cleave on the next turn, at the very least, so we can at least trade off with things. This is a Zagras aggro deck. Uh, which is pretty sweet. Giving everything uh, death touch, swinging in for a bunch and a half. Life is pretty great. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of counters onto a lot of things. Yeah, it's it's always better to put counters onto new things, I believe. Making a big guy is not bad either. No blocks. We take it down to 12. I want the Zagras to make sure that the vessel works here. All right, so swing, swing, swing. They don't block, we're hitting in for eight. They need all other creatures on the board. We're really just kind of hoping that vessel doesn't die here though. Uh, it's a great death touching blocker for us with this deck, which will be sweet. Uh, nothing in their graveyard, which makes Nighthawk Scavenger a little bit worse. So we're just trying to go for Ember Cleave onto Zagras next turn and win. That is the dream. <laughs> you could have used your PTO to just play Zendikar for four days. It is interesting. I having being able to play in the first like week of whenever a set comes out is so fun. I love it. <laughs> I agree. Stone Cold Serpent. It's a big guy. It has. So it has reach. Unfortunately, once we have Embercleave and uh, Trample onto this guy, uh, it actually completely stops them. So, because, um, oh wait, wait, no, protection works differently. I lied. We're in trouble. If they attack with everything, we still win. All right, block you. Um, let's see, it creates another blocker. So actually, we don't kill that. We're fine taking five right now. Hmm. So they block here. Robber the Rich gets blocked here. We get to do um, three, one. So four damage here, two here. So we get to not quite kill. So Death Touch, I'm trying to remember how Death Touch works whenever uh, whenever there is protection. So normally it would just do the amount that you would need to do. And so this is actually a really interesting play. So I think we swing in with everything. I believe that Zagras because it has death touch as well with ember cleave even though this has protection it'll only do one damage each time it hits and so all the rest will go over the top i i believe that's how it works well so so they have to deal damage but it acts as though um the damage would work anyway and so yes the protection will stop it but yeah all damage goes through i was right all right we're good Whew. <laughs> So yeah, that, that's a really interesting interaction. So protection, what it says is that it will not let damage go through, but the way that trample works is all excess damage. And so because it has death touch, it checks as though it was going to do damage. So death touch will hit trample all the excess damage. So it'll try to do one point of damage to stone Cold serpent. It won't be able to. Uh, and so then everything will also go through. Uh, the difference is that because it has protection, um, it will try to do it the first the first turn and the second time it hits for first strike and double strike um it's really weird how it works protection trample all that jazz is some of the weirdest gameplay you can ever have in in magic
All right, up against Reader Rabbit. Is that uh, Reed? I'm trying to remember his name. Whatever. Reed Reed Duke. Whoa. Dude, what's what's the big player's name? I, I can't think of it. What's up, Mr. Bomb? How you doing? Uh, we're fine trading off here. We want this dead, kind of. More stuff in their graveyard is nice too. I guess to put a counter onto it every turn. Um, whenever things become target of spells. All right, I want, and getting out of tap line here seems pretty nice, but I also want to be able to use Shatter Skull Smashing to kill things. So play Mountain, pass the turn. All right, so pay one to put a counter onto something. So, okay. And it's instant speed, cool. All right, no attacks, pass the turn. There's a ton of techs on the one drop. I don't think these are actually that good though, personally. It's a one mana one one, which I mean, if you're playing stuff to make counters be more, then yeah, it's great. Uh, but then whenever creature you control with a plus one plus one counter it becomes target of a spell. I don't think that happens quite as often as people think. All right, well, it's going to happen here. Um, Shatter School Smashing. So kill you, kill... They have one mana up, so kill you. Grow the Nighthawk. I wish they had enchantments, guys, here as well. That'd be great. Oh, so this double triggers with it. Oh, oops. It's divided as you choose. I thought it was just X damage to each of those. That was my, that was my bad. Definitely my bad. <laughs> well then. Looking like an imbecile in front of the Hall of Famer. <laughs> I could have just given them a bunch of insects. That would have been a way to go. Yeah, so it, I misread that. I was thinking that it was just two creatures and it just deals damage to them that way. So yeah, definitely a misplay. Um, let's go with... We need to get stuff off of their board at some point. We could play Wrinkle, which does some decent stuff for us. Um, have the center tapped. Play Wrinkle. Swing in. Um, I'm going to force them to discard, I think. Maybe draw a card here, discard and draw. Because we may lose the Ember Cleave, which is annoying, but... Uh, all right, we'll, we'll discard and draw. And I think we discard the Scavenger here. Ember Cleave can be really powerful with the other Scavenger. Having a Double Strike, or Death Touch, Lifelink, all that stuff will definitely help us turn this around. Down to nine. Let's see how bad this gets for us, though. Like we, we could just be dead on this turn with uh, Sir Farron as a as a thing. <laughs> so we'll see. All right, yeah, just doing a quest and bees. That's great for us. All right, we actually I think we're fairly close to lethal now. We could actually get double triggers with Wrinkle to make them draw two extra cards. So we actually have lethal with Wrinkle. Okay, so fights the wrinkle. That's cool. Hmm, now what? All right, if we swing one with both, um, we don't have quite enough mana to be able to bring it back and do this. I can do X4, just kill the questing beast. Swing in for three, gain some life back. Uh, try not to die and then Ember Cleave on the next turn. Oh no, I don't have quite enough to do that either. I can bring back the other scavenger. Thinking... All right, uh, so attacking with Scavenger. We're 
We're doing it now. Like we could have swung with the Arcane's Vessel as well just to see if it would die, but I'd rather make sure that we have blockers because uh, this can get bad. Um, smashing, bring it in just as a tap land. We could hold on to it, but like I like the, ab the ability to just flash and number cleave as a blocker on the next turn. That could be very, very nice for us. All right, scavenging ooze. Um, that destroys our scavengers. Okay, so yeah, I can't block the questing beast anymore. Do we have a chance at lethal though? We get to kill another creature here. Hmm. They can only get rid of one thing. I, I don't see how they can uh, finish us off here. We should have the game. I don't think I need to play the vessel though, or block here. Just in case, I right, just in case. Down to 11. Double Ember Cleave. All right, so they can get rid of something from the graveyard. We'll have six damage. We can get to gain all the life. Uh, so yeah, Scavenging Use can hit something here. Um, Bring this down to a three, four. Oh, and they gain life. Forgot about that part. We're up to 20 though. I'm not sure if they can kill us here. It's gonna be close. Six, 10, not enough on board. They have 17 right now. 18. 19, 20. Good game. Oh, they got us. All right, I I got greedy. I miss I messed up the math there. I was thinking there wasn't a I didn't think there was a way they could actually finish it off, but well. All right, up against uh Jahikyoi. Um Yeah, keep this. Play smashing tapped while we can. We have four of them in the deck, so it's one of those, like, if we run into the late game, it's great. I'd rather make sure it's always coming in tapped when I can, though. All right, let's go Robber of the Rich. Intimidator's tempting there. Down to 18. How many decks am I doing today? Basically, as many as I'm up to do. <laughs> we'll see how long I feel like playing. Um, play Annex now, force them to actually have an answer with Robert the Rich. Uh, swinging in might have been nice there. Alright, has the stomp. Alright, let's go with the Intimidator. Play this tapped. Um, how does this work? So intimidators, how do how do cowards work? Um, cowards can't block warriors, so this is not a warrior. So pass the turn because they could have killed the annex there, which I mean would have been an okay trade off to an extent. If we hit untapped land, we get a kicked uh, charger here, which will be pretty sweet. Really pump up the annex if any of these guys die. Life is kind of great. Okay, pass to my turn. Call the Death Dweller. All right, well. Shock this in, kick this. I'm not sure if this is going to be like big red where they're going to be playing um, like storm storms wrath that kind of stuff lay lane tyrant. I think we go all in though. 
If Annex dies, that's fine. We get two creatures. We get to keep some really good creatures out that are... Ooh, rude. And the Intimidator. All right. All right, just kill our entire board, why don't you? That's cool. Fair. That's fair. Terror of the Peaks. Alright, we need to find removal. Badly. Alright, call the Death Dweller. Let's grab... Um, I guess we just do both of these guys. It's like all we've got this turn, so... Swing game with robber. Still a card. Okay. That's actually pretty nice. So we can play these as lands, I believe. Um, or just say you can only cast that card as those men of any color. Because I believe that when you play the land side of it, it counts as um, as playing it rather than cast. Yeah, because it says you may play instead of may cast it as a land. So yeah. I think that this requires... I don't know. It's weird. Bone Crusher gets to kill the Annex. Yep, 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 yep. Down to 12. Terror of the Peaks seems really good. I just is a great card always and forever. We're swinging in because these guys can't do anything else. Bring them down to 11. Uh, I don't think that we have a really a chance in this deck anymore. In this matchup. Exploration. Real good. There's the Tyrant. Alright, so they actually don't get to play it this turn. Uh, they lose it. This way. So play out Thieves Guild Enforcer. Mill a couple more. We don't actually get to kill the Bone Crusher Giant. We take nine, drop to three. Terror of the Peaks kills us in just about any way. All right. That's another Leyline Tyrant off the out of the way. Down to two. That's good. If it survives, it's amazing. Does it survive this turn? If they have land, they get another draw. If they have anything else, all right, good game. All right, see you, Darkest Thought. Have a good one. All right, so we have three lands in hand. No black mana, but we can go dig for it here. This is actually a keepable hand. See, this is the best thing about this, is that you can, I mean, you put the put the amount of lands in there so you do have hands like this, but it's just it's sweet. I love being able to have this much action in a hand and still keep it. Yeah, this is one of the best maps. I love it. Okay, play field passage, pass the turn. Get through life, swing with robber. Get in now before this guy gets too big. A one mana potentially like four two is so good. And the fact that it can also do other stuff. It's a, it's a really powerful card actually. One mana one twos have proven to be pretty powerful by themselves. And so this is always a one mana one, one two. Most likely a one mana two two which is still very, very good. All right, plays Paragon. I'm assuming. There it is. So very much, ouch. Oh, black mana. All right. Uh, Vessel. Smashing uh, tapped. 
I should have swung with Robert the Rich first. Actually, I, I wouldn't be able to steal anything anyway. We do trade off though. We're just using Archween as a as a chump blocker here. I know that they're trying to get to a full party, so they're not going to be blocking our stuff basically anytime soon. Robber the Rich, there's three party members. Archween's Vessel. Okay. It's awkward. We have another Call of Death Dweller though, so we just create a 5-5 five five while we can. Um, smashing comes on to play tapped. No attacks past the turn. All right, that's the full team. Something gets flying. Everything that attacks gains indestructible. Holy crap, this is so good. I think I've been undervaluing how powerful the party mechanic is. We're gonna be doing that next, I think. Cause it's good. I, I thought that this had to attack as well when I was first reading it, but nope, it's just amazing. Um, are we dead? Six, five, so we have to block something else. Good game. I try to let people play it out because it is the pre-release event. Let people do all of the cool things that they can. Yeah, party is really good. I mean, the biggest downside is board wipes, but the fact that you can do that on the turn that you play the squad commander is very, very good. These all get plus one. Oh my gosh. Another thing gets flying. If it's warriors, we can't even block them. Uh, so this is also a warrior at all times. Yeah. <laughs> Take our beats, no blocks. That is a lot of damage on turn five. That was turn five, right? That is a lot of damage by turn five. All right, uh, we'll keep this on the power of the Intimidators. Two of them seems pretty nice. With Embercleave especially. Mm. All right, down to 17, untapped land, pretty please. Uh, I think every land in our deck, except for the Hagra mauling. Uh, so there's only two lands in our deck that are tapped at this point. Uro. Fable Passage, that's cool, that's cool. Thieves, Guild Enforcer. Not a land, unfortunately. All right, hidden for eight. So we have Ember Cleave on the next turn, as long as there's not a board wipe. Pass the turn. Don't want to mill them over while they still have Uro in deck, of course, or in light in the graveyard. Any deck list with the new Jace? Uh, I've not run into any yet, but I'm sure there's plenty. It's going to be sweet. Keeps puts it to the bottom. All right, so two cards in Graveyard, that's four. Uh, Wrinkle brings them up to six. All 
Alright, Ember Cleave. No Brazen Borrowers, that's a good sign. Eight. So I think we have exactly, or yeah, not quite lethal. Sorry, I was thinking eight plus four was, I was thinking 16 for some reason, it's 12. All right. And opponent scoops it up. There we go. Nice. I don't know what they were playing. Rogues are gonna probably be the, the best decks. Let's mulligan this. Hmm. Well, lots of black mana. Ugh, this has been rough. All right. Let's drop the Annex, drop the Charger. I want to keep the Zagres just because I'm playing, trying to play Zagres, you know? <laughs> uh, so keep that. Field Passage, pass the turn. Okay, Fable Passage, pass the turn. All right, it looks like Cleric Tribal, which is so fun. Huge fan, huge. I would actually like them to attack here. Perfect. Um, keep Zagras cheaper. I guess no blocks, take it. I should have attacked in first, see what they had. I, I keep misplaying there. Could have been a one drop. Okay, down to 18. We had a rogue meal with no cacophony. It, cacophony, because it gets eight cards into the graveyard, it does turn on a lot of effects for the for rogues. So I can see it why people want to play that, but at the same time, I, I'm not sure if it's amazing or not. Okay, pass the turn. So we get Zagras out on the next turn. Everything gets Death Touch, and we get a good Flyer to be swinging in with. So I, I'm going to try to keep all of our creatures alive. We'll see how that goes. Aura. Another Cleric of Life Spawned. Each gain life, each get counters. All right, pass to my turn. All right, Zagras. They definitely just let these guys die if we swing in with those. Um, so just with the Zagras here, down to 16. Being able to have a Menace lifelinking Death Toucher will be pretty nice, so we'll actually try to get that out next turn. I mean, they have lots of life gain, they have lots of things they can do, but we kind of have a hard lock. As long as we can keep getting creatures on the board, we're in pretty good shape. Ember Cleave. Not enough mana for it, though. Alright, Sunga Zagras. Vessel. Null Priest of Oblivion. I would love to actually kick that, but not going to happen anytime soon here. <laughs> Woe Strider. That's interesting. I did not put Woe Strider into my Cleric deck, but honestly, it was kind of needed. We needed ways to be able to sacrifice things to keep getting more value. Come on, deck. Give me a flip on land. Um, so I can give this Trample as well. With Death Touch, we can kill lots of things. They kind of want things to die, but that's also somewhat okay. Um... Okay, swing like that. <laughs> I 
All right, so now they might as well just sacrifice this to Ghost Strider. We get in with Trample through it all. Um, they can stop one point of damage, gain one life. <laughs> if we can get to our Embercleave, we're in such good shape. Like, a Trampling Death Toucher guy is so powerful. They already have a way of doing that. That's cool. All right, down to 11. Were they already at 11? <laughs> we got some guys out the board. That's what matters. All right, big flying dude. That's cool. All right, um, this gets to bring back the other two guys. I'm fine trading these guys off, though. We'll have to deal with the demons, but with Wrinkle, with Zagras, we have ability to kill at least two of them. With Embercleave getting onto Zagras, we'd be in sweet shape. All right, well, that was a good draw. That was a sweet draw. <laughs> Doesn't actually matter. Dude, we've been stuck on three lands for how long now? We have 24 lands in the deck uh, with all the other ones, so we don't have more than normal, but... We should still be hitting more lands than this. 14 la cards deep, three lands. Doesn't quite sound right. Arkin's Vessel, okay. Come on, give me a red source. If they swing aggressively, we can just swing back for the win. So yeah, please go ahead with all those demons. Deck, come on. All right, they have another vessel. This is kind of our only play, so... Uh, you become a coward. Trample and death touch is so good. Attack in here. They're debating if they want to block with, uh, with just with aura. All right, get in for four. Down to nine. Pass the turn. Keeps it on top. That's a bad sign. All right, so that's all four of the Archangel's vessels, right? No blocks. Down to eight. I mean, if they don't have board wipe, we get to win here. Brings back two more things. Okay, so one one other blocker. We still have lethal, though. Now they have to find the guys for the life gain. So they can bring back... Let's see if they do it at the right pace. So yeah, the you actually have to order that a little bit differently. They don't get to gain life. We do still have lethal. And we're going to find the mountain for Embercleave anyway. Seriously? Come on, deck. <laughs> Swing in. I guess I could have... Uh, I guess it's only you can't block warriors. So they block one of the five fives. Nine damage comes through. They don't have any way of gaining life here. Uh, they can sacrifice the aura to bring back, I guess, a cleric of life's blood. So they do have a way of surviving here. Kills a Zagras. That doesn't save them now, though. Yeah, that's not enough. Now they only gain one life. And we're still doing 10. So they done messed up.
Good game. Block the wrong dude, my friend. They actually would have won if they hadn't done that. Dude, I still though. No lands for how long? Oh, that was rough. <laughs> we only need like four lands for this deck to function really well. But we need those four that fourth land. <laughs> All right, heading into the wrap up for this deck. Uh, overall, Zagros himself is busted. Making all of your all of your cheap creatures all of a sudden have death touch is actually a really powerful effect. And just being able to have a four four flyer that can swing in while you have a full body of creatures to be blocking with is kind of oppressive. I was actually really surprised by it. I'm not sure if I was playing the lands right. We never found a single uh, Hogger Mauling card. That would have been nice to have in a few different matchups. Uh, I definitely played the Shadow School Smashing wrong. Uh, I've got to figure it out. So it's divided as you choose among tar two dark creatures. So big, big mistake there. Uh, overall, deck is super fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I definitely had a blast playing it. So anyway, uh, please leave a like and subscribe uh, on the YouTube channel. I am going to be doing this still because this is the pre release event. We're going to be on live for a while uh, down in the description. So if you guys want to follow me on Twitch for different events, different things going on with Seneca Rising, link is on the description below. And we're going to go ahead and keep on going on.